Hello, this is Ask Susanna, December 22nd, 2017, and today I'm going to be talking about very little babies sleep, um, newborns, as they transition into not newborns. I have a question from Nagai K, who asks, or who says, uh, Hi Susanna, I have a four-month-old who takes a pacifier and bed shares, and we're trying to stop. He will fall asleep in my arms for his first sleep of the night at 7 p.m. We're able to transfer him into a bassinet where he'll complete another sleep cycle or he'll complete one sleep cycle from 30 to 45 minutes and will wake up crying. We'll hold him and repeat. He does this for another sleep cycle. It's not until close to midnight, sometimes wide awake from 10 to 12, when he'll finally settle, usually in my bed, and then I'll transfer him back to the bassinet. He still feeds at regular three-hour intervals, starting at 3 a.m. I guess my question is, how to get him to transition through sleep cycles without my help and pacifier? And why is he waking the first two cycles of the night? Look forward to your response. Please let me, excuse me, please let me know if you need more info. And then I ask for some more info. And um, I'd like to get him in his own, I'd like for him to be in his own bed as I don't sleep well with him in mine. I'm worried I would wake him up with the slightest movement. Also, to get better sleeping habits so that he can sleep in other places like Grandma's house. I feel like he is already very clingy and dependent on me only and would like him to be less dependent and comfortable with other surroundings. He can sleep for, for one and a half hours, usually during naps in the bassinet or car seat, sometimes when he is bed sharing with me in the wee hours, but never three hours straight. Our routine is based on his wake window, which is usually one hour, 15 minutes, he is usually woken up in the morning by, our other, by older sibling around 9 a.m. If we are home, he will be put to naps in the bassinet, awake with a soother, which he will nap for uh, one cycle, 30 to 45 minutes, then wake up crying. Settles for another cycle once the soother is replaced. If we are out, he naps for 30 minutes in either the car seat or carrier. He will have three to four naps per day, depending if they were long or short naps. There is no routine in whether the morning, afternoon, or early, early evening nap is the longest, as it depends on where he naps. He feeds every three hours throughout the day, and feedings occur based on time during his wake window. All right, so there's a whole bunch in here, and I'm not going to be able to address everything um, in this format, but I'm going to do my best to touch on some of your big questions. So the first one, uh, but why is he waking for the first two cycles of the night? Um, it might surprise you to learn that a typical bedtime for a four-month-old baby is actually closer to 8 or 9 p.m. than to 7. At five to six months old, babies start to shift a little earlier. So it's entirely possible that you're misreading those wake-ups as disrupted bedtime sleep, when in fact they could be better read as evening cat naps. Um, it's also possible that he's generally overtired, which means that his body will be producing cortisol in response. Cortisol is a stress hormone and is very stimulating. So, and as I mentioned, it, it, can, be re, re, it can be produced in response to overtiredness. It's really important then to time his sleeps properly. Um, since you're already keeping an eye on his wake windows, that's, that's great, you're, you're on your way to managing cortisol. Um, an hour and 15 minutes is an appropriate wake window for a four-month-old, uh, but I urge you to watch him more carefully than you do the clock. Get to know his tired signs, zoning out or yawning, rubbing his face, etc. There, you could, if you Google young baby tired signs, you'll find lots of lists of suggestions of what you can look for. Uh, and get to know his tired signs and respond by um, starting his sleep rituals right away. So don't delay on that. As for your other questions about reducing clinginess and encouraging independent sleep and removing his pacifier, the answer might be the opposite of what you're thinking. Um, so primates, which is the order of animals to which humans belong, require a close proximity to a primary caregiver in order to feel secure. And that's because, evolutionarily speaking, if a baby primate wasn't near his mama, it means certain death. So, uh, likewise, suckling is a need for mammal babies. Um, suckling means you're close to mama, which means you're close to security and to food, which means survival. And lucky for us humans, we've invented pacifiers, which frees the mama to do other things, like sleep without worrying you're going to wake them up or anything like that. 
without compromising his need or his sense of security, his need for a sense of security. So with this in mind, I encourage you to not remove his pacifier, not yet. Typically, babies have two windows when taking the pacifier away it will go a bit smoother. Um, and those are just before one, years old, one year old and just after two. So I encourage you to wait for the right window and not to take it away prematurely because taking it away prematurely will result in an increase in his sense of insecurity, which will result in more clinginess and more uh, resistance to independent sleep. So yes, this is, will mean that he will need somebody to put his soother back in at night and this can be disruptive to your sleep. But the person who puts his soother back in doesn't have to be you. So if you have a partner or someone helping you raise this child, I suggest you have them be on soother, pacifier, replacing duty. Further, you might want to get a stash of soothers to keep in his room so that when this happens, you don't have to grope around in the dark to try to find, find it. You can just grab one off the pile. And in the same vein, um, it's unrealistic to expect a four-month-old baby for whom proximity to mom is literally a life-or-death thing to not be clingy or to sleep independently. Uh, the best way to deter clinginess and insecurity and to facilitate independent sleep is to respond to your baby quickly and consistently. You can also practice separation in the daytime in low stress circumstances by stepping out of the room for a second and then returning. With this kind of practice, you're basically training your baby to understand that when mama leaves, she comes right back. Eventually, your leaving will not raise any alarms in his mind because mama always comes back. And this is a really good thing to do to set the stage for sleep training to reduce anxiety. And speaking of sleep training, sleep training, uh, which typically refers to behavioral modification strategies aimed at encouraging independent sleep, can be good and it can be bad. When sleep training is good, the baby learns that his bed is a safe and secure place to sleep. When sleep training is bad, the baby learns that his calls for comfort will not be attended to, so he stops asking for them. This results, uh, the results from this kind of sleep training can cause more problems than rewards. So I encourage you, especially with such a young baby, to tread quite carefully here. Uh, four months is still very young, uh, so don't worry about instilling bad habits or sleep crutches or anything at this age. They might occur, yes, but any bad habit can be broken. So the most important thing for him right now is to trust that his needs will be taken care of. And as I have mentioned, proximity to mom or another caregiver is a baby primate need. So to recap, everything you've described about your baby, his sleep patterns, his eating patterns, his clinginess is normal and healthy. At this age, the best thing to do is to set the stage for independent sleep, but don't expect it yet. Keep him feeling secure by responding to him when he calls for you or send your partner in if it's a non-boob related thing. Um, be consistent and um, keep his days and night distinct by developing waking and sleeping rituals. So um, sometimes what happens with, with little babies when they are first developing their sleep rhythms is they'll get their days and their nights mixed up. And um, this can be a cause for sometimes for irregular sleep patterns in the night. So um, ensure that the daytimes are full of high vibrant energy and the nighttimes are dim and calm and quiet. And those are the best ways to distinct, help the baby distinguish between day and night. You can also ensure that he is exposed to natural sunlight in the morning, just, just for a few moments or minutes. And, um, that will help set his circadian rhythm properly. Um, his sleep will consolidate eventually, starting with nighttime sleep, and then the first nap of the day is the first nap to consolidate, then the second and third. And this consolidation can be supported by the, your response to him. And um, the response, what I mean, is responding to his calls for your help and also responding quickly to his sleep signs so that he learns that these feelings he's having are tired feelings and that the tiredness is relieved by sleep. Eventually you'll find a rhythm with him. Um, 
Okay, and so to lengthen sleep cycles, your final question, um, or one of your final questions. First of all, um, like I just said, understand that his sleep will not be consolidated at this age. So everything is normal that you're seeing. Ignore anyone who tells you, including experts, that he should be sleeping through the night. Every baby develops at a different pace for a variety of different reasons, both internal and external. Um, so just don't compare him to other babies at this point. It's not helpful. Um, but to nudge him in the direction of nice long bed, nighttime sleep, good consolidated sleeps, um, and lengthened sleep cycles, or, or rather um, the ability to go into a next sleep cycle by himself, like I said, respond to him immediately when he begins to rouse. You want to get to him before his emotions get heightened because it's harder to come down from heightened emotions. If he's hungry, nurse him. But if he's not hungry, find another way to soothe him. Um, start with the shush pat method where you lean over his bed, you pat his bum, and you shush, shush him in long shush. The padding should be gentle, firm, in a way that jiggles his body just a little bit because that rocking motion and the shushing sound mimics the sensations of the womb and is very comforting for a little baby. Any touch that you give him in this sleepy waking state when you're trying to get him to go back down or just go down for the first time, the touch should be firm and slow and confident. Wispy light touches like this kind of thing is very stimulating whereas Slow touches are calming. Um, you might want to use a white noise machine because that, like I said, mimics the conditions of the womb and has been shown to improve baby's sleep of all ages and even adult sleep can be improved by white noise. But get, make sure you get a proper white noise machine. Don't use an app on your phone or um, a YouTube video on your computer because the speakers on your phone and your computer are likely too tinny to reach the right tone of white noise to be effective. And finally, probably the most important thing of this whole deal with having a small baby is to take care of yourself. Get your baby used to other caregivers, your mom or your partner, um, for diaper changes, snuggles, soother replacements, anything that isn't you doesn't have to be you. Um, this will help give you a break. And it will help facilitate the independence because your baby will start to feel comfortable with other people. Um, but try to be, be consistent with who those other people are. And nap when he's napping. And I know this advice can be frustrating because especially four months in when you might be kind of itching to do other things. But if you're tired, you're going to have a way harder time being consistent, which will end up making things harder for everybody in the long run. The other stuff can wait. This time with your little one in the grand scheme of things is really short. So try to avoid doing the things that you are kind of wanting to do and try to sleep when he's sleeping. Um, this also has the effect of helping the two of you co-regulate, which is a phenomenon that occurs between two people when they're close to one another, where they, they kind of absorb each other's emotions. Um, so if you're taking care of yourself, by sleeping when it's the right time to sleep, and the right time to sleep is when he's sleeping, he'll literally learn from your body's cues, and that will help him sleep more regularly too. Yes, so just to say that again, take care of yourself. The well-being of your baby is directly connected to your well-being. I can't overstate how important it is. Now, I'm, I'm not able to really get into the nitty-gritty of everything, and I'd love to, but I can't hear, so I'm going to have to end it there. But I hope that you found some important or some um, helpful information in this video. And I hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.